over Medicare 101, the basics mm -hmm. with STAR. So I'm going to let STAR come up. Hey, you're going to introduce yourself and tell us about your experience and, and your presentation. Okay. Hello, online participants. How are you today? Hello, everyone. My name is STAR Mbake. I'm STAR Mbake. I'm an independent insurance agent. I uh, not only work with Medicare eligibility um, participants, but also those who have been on SSDI which is the reason why you qualify for Medicare, okay? All righty, so we're just gonna scroll up like this. All right, so original Medicare, unfortunately, it didn't transition to the way it was supposed to. Uh, however, original Medicare is part A and B. Today, we're gonna cover part C and D. Uh, Medicare supplements, employer plan and benefits, uh, we can skip over that, and when and how to enroll. So Original Medicare. Original Medicare um, is a government program. It's called Original Medicare because it's government funded. Uh, today, there are additional plans available for those who need it. Part A covers hospital coverage and Part B is medical coverage. You have to have Part A and B in order to qualify for any of the services that would be beneficial to you, okay? Unfortunately, um, original Medicare does not cover prescription drugs. In many cases, um, your child may need uh, prescription drugs. So original Medicare covers 80% and there's a 20% gap that uh, those who are taking care of those who are on Medicare, the 20% is what you're responsible for. It's out-of-pocket expenses in addition to any um, annual premium, co-insurance, or co-pays, okay? So part A, I apologize for that. Part A um, covers inpatient stays up to 150 consecutive days, psychiatric hospital stays up to 190 days, outpatient hospital treatments, skilled nursing facility, as well as some health services, especially when relating to a hospital stay. Um, so normally for those um, who qualify, it is, they having to put in 39 quarters or working 39 quarters in order to get part A for a zero premium. 30 to 39 quarters, uh, they would be responsible for $274 monthly in 2022. And if they worked less than 30 quarters, then it would be $499 uh, again in 2002. Regardless of the premium, uh, most people will have a yearly deductible of $1,556 in 2022. It does change annually, <clears throat> depending on loss. Uh, Part B covers your uh, physician and uh, healthcare provider visits. So it also covers annual wellness visits with your doctor, mental health, lab tests, and x-rays, as well as ambulance uh, transportation in emergency situations. The Part B deductible in 2022 is 200 and I'm sorry, $170.10. Uh, the, de the deductible is $233. In 2023, the premium for Part B, and everyone has to pay the premium for Part B, is $164. Now, the um, if you are on Medicaid, it works with Medicare, and you may not be responsible for paying Part B. If your child is eligible for Medicaid, or your client is eligible for Medicaid, they are not responsible. They may not be responsible, depending on their level of um, their level, their Medicaid level. They would be responsible for paying Part B, but normally everyone has to pay Part B. Okay. So who is eligible? Most of the time, Medicare, uh, again, is the government healthcare program for those who are either uh, 65, have been diagnosed with ALS um, or Lou Gehrig's Gehr disease or ESRD, which is end-stage renal disease, um, or receiving SSDI for 24 months. So in this case, that would be your child. So if your child qualifies or has been on SSDI for 24 months or more, Normally, they should receive a paper stating that they are on original Medicare. However, that hasn't been happening since COVID uh, started. So you may need to follow up 
with the Social Security Office in order to ensure that your child is or can get Medicare, okay? You can either call SSDI, um, the Social Security Office, you can go into the Social Security Office, or you can apply for Medicare on the Social Security um, website, which takes much less time, okay? After your child receives the um, original Medicare, it's a red, white, and blue uh, card. It has the effective dates, hospital uh, parts A and B. You have to have both effective dates. Then you would be able to qualify for the services that I'm able to provide for you. Okay. So if you get, again, if you get uh, Medicare due to... SSDI, you will be automatically enrolled during the 25th month of benefits. Um, and if it would be ALS or end stage renal failure, then it would be after your official diagnosis. So normally, um, this is the income bracket that uh, people, uh, that Medicare requires in order for you to get a certain amount or pay a certain amount of premium for your Part B. And this is if you do not have Medicaid. <clears throat> so if you as an individual or the child makes uh, $91,000 or less, it would be $170. Or in 2023, $164. Now, because uh, many of the those who have autism are not going to work full-time jobs for 40 hours a week, you won't have to worry about this. Right? Okay, so Part C is Medicare our Medicare Advantage plans. They can be a bit complicated because even though they are heavily regulated, um, they are not government healthcare plans. They are private plans offered by insurance companies like United Healthcare, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Aetna. Okay, uh, since they are private plans, you will have to enroll in original Medicare prior to uh, receiving or even being eligible for Medicare Advantage. So. I am not able to offer you anything unless you have the Medicare card, okay? Unless you have the uh, red, white, and blue card with the effective dates for both part A and part B, I'm not able to service you, okay? So types of Medicare Advantage plans. There are five main types of Medicare Advantage plans. Uh, SNP, which is special needs, Medicare savings accounts, HMOs, which are health maintenance organizations, PPOs, which are preferred provider organizations, and PFFS, which is the private fee for service model. So you want to know which one is most beneficial and right for you. <clears throat> so to qualify for a SNP plan, you must first qualify and enroll again for original Medicare. Okay, so one, one type of SNP plan is the ISNP, which is uh, Institutional Special Needs Plan. They must live in an institution, skilled nursing facility, nursing home, psychiatric facility uh, for at least 90 days to qualify. Okay, the CSNP is chronic special needs. They must have a qualifying disability to qualify. Qualifying conditions include but are not limited to diabetes, AIDS, cancer, chronic heart or lung disorders, dementia, again, end-stage renal, end -stage, uh, renal disease, which is ESRD, or neurological disorders or stroke. Uh, DSNP is uh, income-based, and it is based on whether or not you have Medicaid eligibility. <clears throat> so, I am not... A lot of times, because of um, it, it was informational for me what the NITRA uh, presented, uh, those Medicaid programs, a lot of times when you are on Medicare, if you have those other programs, it may disqualify you for a DSNIP. Okay, so it depends on your level of eligibility with Medicare. So if you're fully, um, if you're fully covered, which is QMD, with Medicaid, then you don't have to pay for anything because Medicaid supplements any costs that you have. 
So if there's a hospital cost associated, if there's a premium, if there's a copay, you don't have to worry about anything because Medicaid helps you pay for it. However, if you're not on Medicaid, but you have Medicare, um, SSDI will automatically take the Part B from, I'm sorry, Medicare would automat will automatically take the Part B, which is $164 from the SSDI check. If you'd like, you could um, do it by way of a debit card or something like that. However, um, most of the time, that's, that's how it works. So in co comparing and contrasting original Medicare versus uh, Medicare Advantage. So as said, um, original Medicare is a traditional program offered directly through the federal government. It includes part A, which is inpatient hospital coverage and part B, which is outpatient medical coverage. Uh, most doctors in the country take this insurance. Medicare limits how much an individual can be charged when they are visiting participating or non-participating providers. Uh, the beneficiary receives a red, white, and blue card, as I explained earlier, to show to providers when receiving care. However, this is 80% of whatever the cost is, okay? Medicare Advantage not only um, has the 80%, but covers the remaining 20% for you, okay? So these are private plans that contract with federal governments, Life, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, uh, Wellcare is a very popular one, Cigna. Um, mu they must provide the same benefits offered by original Medicare, okay? Uh, but different rules will apply. They may offer certain benefits that original Medicare doesn't cover, like dental, hearing, and vision, okay? Some of the most common types of plans are HMOs, PPOs, and PFFS. So in Medicare Advantage plans, not only will you receive extras like dental, hearing, and vision, you may also receive silver sneaker um, <laughs> for your son, daughter, or uh, those you are a caregiver for. And silver sneaker is just a gym membership. So them getting out in the community and being able to work out in different gyms is advantage. Okay. Part D. <clears throat> so Part D um, is the prescription drug coverage plan. Uh, Medicare Advantage offers Part D included in their plan. However, original Medicare does not offer Part D. It is separate, about $30 or $33.27 uh, a month for Part D coverage. Okay. Um, you'll notice right away that two plans that look the same on paper may be extremely different. Uh, price points. The biggest reason why is that Part B, I'm sorry, Part D plan may cost more on another um, Medicare Advantage plan versus the one that you chose. So formulary is the list uh, put together by Medicare, and it is it has put the prescriptions in tiers, from tier one to tier five. Tier one are less expensive drugs, whereas tier five are the most expensive. Um, it is a list of drugs that the plan covers. The formulary is usually presented in tiers, as I just explained. It's important to keep track of all the medications. Okay. Well. It's a, okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I think it's back up. Sorry. <laughs> Technology. Mm -hmm. So far, are there any questions? There you go. I'm getting good. Or we can wait on questions. <laughs> Sorry. So, as I said, Medicare Advantage offers extras. Um, so fitness programs, dental, vision, hearing, um, transportation. So in the instance that maybe you didn't have, you had to work and your son or daughter had to go to a doctor's visit. If the plans provide transportation free of cost for your child to go uh, to and from their appointments. 
Medicare supplement plans do not apply to you all only because it is a monthly fee that you have to pay of like anywhere from $128 to $150. It does not include the, um, the Part D plan as well. However, um, DSNP or those who are younger than 65 don't qualify for the Medicare supplement plans. Okay. And the employer plans would not, um, would not apply to you all. So as mentioned, original Medicare is very, very limited for certain benefits such as dental and vision. As you leave your prior health plan or whatever health plan you have now, uh, you'll need to consider whether or not you'll lose benefits and then find a way to replace them. Dental is a great example. Um, if for instance, you are covered by way of your employer, your child is covered by way of your employer on the healthcare plan, However, you're transitioning to original Medicare, and then you would like to supplement those things that original Medicare doesn't offer, you want to consider what is the best option for your child. So if they are not in need of dental services, there's no need to choose a plan that has $5,000 in dental coverage. Uh, so some plans have uh, more for you to spend. They give you um, extras in order to attract you, but if you don't need the extras, there's no point of grossing them. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Yeah. They're saying the package of payments. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Medicare Advantage plans are able to add benefits like comprehensive dental, uh, vision, and hearing. You may find that Medicare Advantage is the best option uh, because it can wrap around all of those extras that you need into one plan. So you may enroll in original Medicare after you've been, after you've had 24 months of receiving social security disability. Um, however, unfortunately, from what I've been experiencing, a lot of people have called to ask if they qualify. The representative that they speak to says that they don't. When they go in office or when they call again, then they're able to receive services. So you may want to make sure that um, the person on the other end that you get actually wants to provide you with the information that is available to you. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, because Normally, original Medicare has different enrollment periods. The first is the initial enrollment period, which is three months before, three months after, and during the birth date of their 65th birthday. However, most of the time you will qualify for the special. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you had a question. Okay. Do you want to wait to the end? Uh, they was asking if it covers hearing aids. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, you would qualify for special circumstances because of when you would receive original Medicare. So you're able to um, enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan anytime throughout the year because of how you received original Medicare. Normally, it would be initial, you would have to follow certain enrollment periods in order to qualify. Um, and you have to wait. Uh, so there's a lull between April and October, where no one over the age of 65 is able to apply for original Medicare or Medicare Advantage plans, aside from them having a life-changing circumstance or event. However, because of the way your clients or uh, your child apply for original Medicare or receive uh, original Medicare, you're able to qualify for uh, Medicare Advantage plans all year round. Okay, so this would apply for uh, those who are 65 and up. Initial, as I said, initial enrollment period is going to be seven months. So three months prior, the month of, and three months after the 65th birthday. Annual enrollment period is now between October 15th and December 7th. So they can change their plans as often as they'd like. Special enrollment period is if 
there was a natural disaster, a hurricane, something of that nature, and they wanted to change plans because of that. Um, open enrollment period is January 1st to March 31st, uh, when people already have Medicare, but they do want to make a one-time change. Uh, general enrollment period is from January 1st through March 31st, and it's only for those who missed their initial enrollment period. Now, if you qualify, well, when you qualify for the special enrollment period, however, you've been experiencing difficulty with the plan for whatever reason during the time that, during that first year, and you didn't like the plan, you would fall into one of these plans, annual enrollment period, or the open enrollment period in order to transition from the plan that you have now to a different plan, okay? So if you wanna change because you are not satisfied with the services that you're receiving, you can do that one time from January 1st to March 31st or from October 5th, 15th to December 7th every year. Those are the times every year that you can change. Carriers, carriers uh, change the benefits that uh, are given to participants all of the time because of the feedback that they receive. So sometimes there's a give back program where you will receive a certain amount of money that you can spend on your dental, hearing, or vision. Sometimes $500, they'll give it to you in what, by way of a Visa gift card for you to spend for that year and then subsequent years. Um, however, that depends on the carrier and it changes every year. So it depends on, um, so you have to watch out just for different specials and extras that each, um, that each carrier does, okay? And this just um, <clears throat> explains the initial enrollment period. So when the initial enrollment period is missed, unfortunately, there's a 10% increase on the Part B as well as the Part A. You don't have to worry about Part, part A because of the way that they're receiving original Medicare due to SSDI being on it for 24, 24 months. However, uh, instead of paying this year's $274 uh, for a Part B premium, instead of paying the $274, you'd be paying $301 if you missed it for the first year. Uh, it would increase 10% or it increases 10% every time you have um, the option to enroll, however you don't. Yes. Are people essentially required to carry medical So if you, um, in the instance that someone is turning 65 or about 65, if you never intend on getting Medicare, then there's no way that they can charge you. However, if you decide later that you do want to get Medicare for the time that you did not have it, you will be charged. I'm just thinking of someone who's got limited financial resources and is saying, I can't afford Medicare now, but obviously this time is on. So if they can't afford Medicare, you're saying the Part P option, the hundreds, the money. I'm saying any of it. Why would, I mean, it, it, they would only be paying the 170, but if they say, I can't afford the 170, so they pass on, they pass on, but then later they would get charged. Yes, they would. However, uh, they could possibly apply for Medicaid and be approved for Medicaid in order to supplement the Part B. And then they wouldn't be charged the penalty because Medicaid would pay for that. If they apply for Medicaid. Yeah. And they get approved for Medicaid. Yeah. And they can show documentation why they weren't paying. So they would have had to have that go before the 65th birthday. So that they could. Just three months before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so there are several ways that you can enroll in original Medicare. One is by www.socialsecurity.gov. You can also call the Social Security office, which I do not recommend. <laughs> um, <laughs> or you can go in person because it will be much easier. Um, yeah, after you get your red, white, and blue card is when you would reach out to an independent agent because they can tell you the list of different carriers and what they offer 
for you having to go through every carrier website to look at the benefits of what you need. Any questions? There was a question online about hearing aids. Yes, hearing aids are included in your benefit for Medicare Advantage plans. That is after you have original Medicare. You have to have original Medicare. Does your child automatically go from SSI to SSDI? What's the difference between the two? Social Security income. So um, it is it is not automatic. It is something that you would have to ask for or um, communicate with as a your social security office. Uh, so for instance, you're paying, if you have a job, you're paying for two SSI. So when you retire, you'll get SSI versus you communicating and saying, this is um, a disability that I have and you receive an SSI or your child receives. So it doesn't, like, for SSDI, it doesn't matter the age. They can be 17. Um, I have a client who's 37. I have one who is 23, and they're receiving SSDI. They applied for original Medicare, and so they're able to get Medicare Advantage. Are your slides going to be available as Any other questions online to my participants? Let's see. Uh, uh, yes, they, they'll send a message. I kind of missed some of the beginning of it, but I was just wondering, like the age requirement, mm -hmm. um, as far as disability is concerned, mm -hmm. if they have a disability, they can start the SSI? Like, when if, it, if they have a disability, then they need to apply for SSDI okay. in order to be able to apply for original Medicare. So basically, SSDI is if they're under the age 65 and they have a disability? Mm -hmm. Okay. But even if they're 65, they should have already been receiving SSDI mm -hmm. in order to. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is there an age range or like if I get my child diagnosed at like three, mm -hmm. do I go ahead and automatically apply for SSDI or how does that? That is a good question. I am not 100% sure of that question, but I can find that out. Okay. Um, most times it is teenagers and up from what I've seen. I haven't seen like children, children mm -hmm. get approved for SSDI. However, I've seen teenagers and up, especially young adults apply for SSDI and get approved and are able to apply, apply for original Medicare. So a child could not um, receive original Medicare. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my sister's situation, she's in her thirties and my mother's 69 mm -hmm. and she's retired. Mm -hmm. And my mother says she can draw off of her. Um, my sister stays in a uh, state supported school. Okay. So I think my sister received some of my mom's social security or is it it's, it's DI? So, um, when applying for original Medicare, yeah. if your sister, but most of the time it's in the form of a spouse, mm -hmm. if your mom has worked 39, 40 or more, then it is able to, the person, the dependent is able to kind of like feed off of it. Mm -hmm. And so they wouldn't have to pay part A. Okay. It's only for the part A. Part B, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if we have parents watching and they are retired approaching retirement mm -hmm. and they have a special needs adult child they will be able to draw i would okay. definitely suggest that you do it separately okay because that will be more beneficial than doing it okay. any other questions mm -hmm. Just so we fully understand what you're asking, if we've never heard of that. So when someone retires and they do have a child over the age of 21, um, there's two parts where there's an additional, there's additional funds. Can someone break that down, how that works? Can you repeat your question? Yeah. So when she was explaining that, um, that her mother would be able to draw. My what sister, is, my yeah, sister is drawing. My sister, yeah, my draw. mother. What is she drawing exactly? She also, um, I think she's pulling from her social security. But when you say a, pulling, yeah. is that does that mean benefits? Does that mean um, like 
health care or is that a check or I think it's a cash that? value because she says she gets reimbursed for certain items that she buys because my sister is in a state supported school she's only able to have so much money in her account per month mm -hmm. and my mother is retired and so she's drawn off that as well so we try to keep it at a certain level but my sister also has a trust um but my mother told me that because she's retired in April draw social security she's also able to benefit off of her retirement so it's like a lot yeah. oh. I was going to say I I think this relates to what you're asking. My husband is also retired and he's uh, received Social Security benefits each month. And because he was employed and eligible for that, our son receives RSDI, which is half of what my husband's check was. So my husband gets his full check and then my son gets an amount equal to half of what my husband's check was. And now, after two years, he, he just became eligible for Medicare. Mm -hmm. And Medicaid is covering the hundred and seventy. Okay. And he's an adult. He's, a, he's 27 years old. Okay. That's me. Um, that's pretty good to know, because I didn't understand that part. It's yeah. way on. But he had to have been diagnosed prior to the age of 22, and so he was receiving... SSI mm -hmm. and it converted when my husband began to draw social security. It converted to RSDI and it converted to RSDI. Okay. And what is RSDI? I think it was like retired services, the supplemental disability <laughs> income. <laughs> Not letters. Right. Is your son still at home? Yes. Okay. So he will receive that for the rest of his life? That's my understanding. Do you receive the social security for the yes. lifetime? Yes. It's a lifetime. Yeah, that, that's what we were told that I am Is there anything that would make him not qualify? Like if he, does your son work? So he does not work, but one of the things I'm wanting to learn because he only, you know, he's relatively young, is I understand that you're supposed to be able to work some number of hours without endangering benefits mm -hmm. but it is not means tested as the ssi does. no man. so he's entitled to it because of my husband's eligibility for benefits. No. and he's allowed apparently to work somewhere he's not working and i would like at some point to see that he does some work but i'm unclear on how much he's allowed to work before that would endanger his benefits do you have any experience with that? I know at one time when we were uh, like paying yeah. Andrew, how did that affect? Was yeah, it complicated? It's yeah, yeah, it's kind of complicated. Every month I have to write a report of how much he's earning and they calculate two months behind. So make the whole thing so complicated, especially when it's not the same each month. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's kind of frustrates them. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're like, yeah. But are those interested in, re in regards to Medicaid? What um, you guys are talking about? No. SSI. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. I know my client actually has an app where she has to input like her net pay and all of this stuff each week. And that it used to be each month, but now it's easier because she gets paid each week. But for her to do it on her own, she inputs all that, all the numbers, and then it takes out. So it automatically being submitted then? Yeah, it sends it through. And then her dad, like, I guess, based on what the hours that she works, I think that affects her monthly. That's oh, yeah, no, because I, I know they say it continually. Yeah, because yeah, she like still gets money, but if I know she's not supposed to work over like a certain amount of right. hours, yeah, and that's what you're really trying to figure out. Yeah, yes. so it is the two months. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah, when I don't know when he knows or if he just knows whenever he gets into the mail, like this is how much he's taking yeah. out. Well, and they, I, I know you're usually recommended like if, if it's like 17 hours at, at whatever pay. Mm -hmm. You always want to kind of give yourself a little buffer and say, well, then I'm never going to work more than 50 hours because, 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 because of the lag and 
you know, yeah, four we weeks or five weeks yeah. versus, yeah, yeah, exactly. The computer, if she works at Kroger, we had to, like, because she had a lot of big availability, but we had to, like, bring it down because the computer kept wanting to schedule her for, like, full time. And then right. her dad said, so, no, we can't. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. You have to have a five year career. Yeah, so yeah. well, she's, she's not capable of working out. No, but I mean, the, 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 the yeah. employer has to be aware. Yeah, and I, we had to, it was like an ongoing thing. I think we finally got it figured out, but every once in a while, it was like the computer would change and then it's scheduled for full time. And, yeah. That's the one thing I'll say we kind of had some struggle at the beginning of our foundation is figuring out exactly how the pay works. Because at one point you want to reimburse people for their work, but we also had got reports from parents that it was just too complicated. Exactly. And then our HR had to figure it out as well. So it was, it was a lot to try to figure out. And we still like in that process, um, I will say that I've known some other uh, organization, I think Heartsway is is one of them. And some of them, they, um, they use the Minimum Wage Act. Mm -hmm. um, so they reduce the amount of money they can earn per hour so they can work more hours. But it's such a tug of war there because some people feel like it's exploitation. Yeah, I was going to say, they feel it together. Yeah. Yeah, so and it's like it's a hard balancing act, but it's very valuable information that you need to know because work is very important. It helps with identity, it helps us with social skills, it helps us learn things and, and just be around people with more experience. So that's definitely needed, but at the same time, having that golden ticket of receiving your SSDI or that's important as well. So you don't want to you know, miss out on what you need for a lifetime versus something that's just like temporary um, occupational to get out to get those um, life skills and job skills going. So Sorry. the question is that you all are wanting to know how many hours you're talking to work before they're jeopardized. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the thing is like, it's the same thing with Medicaid. So if you work a certain amount of hours, you will Want to be kicked out of Medicaid and you won't be able to apply. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You'll and have then, to reduce them out. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're responsible for the Part B and, you know, it's, well, it's, it's very complicated. They exactly. just change everything in entirely. And then they're always changing it because one minute or one year it will be, oh, well, uh, you don't have to worry about um, working 20 more hours and then it's reduced to 15 and you didn't know it because. It's not um, advertised or marketed as um, as often as other things are. Yeah, it's kind of So, uh, oh, you both have the future. Yeah. Uh, so I just looked up online. So for SSI annually for 2022, the limit is nineteen thousand five hundred and sixty dollars that you can actually earn before you lose your full benefit, but you're, you're able to make an individual in 2022 would need to be making less than $841 of countable income per month and have less than 2,000 in assets to qualify um, for that. So the countable income is something that you also have to be aware of because it's not just your net you have a living wage that's calculated in, into that and some other factors. So, um, well, like my son's SSI was, I, I call it being God, but, um, because he lived at home and that was considered a benefit. Yeah. And he didn't have to pay rent. So, mm -hmm. so he didn't get as much. And I know a lot of parents, if their child is over 18, especially 21, um, they do a lease. Yeah, yeah. Or that. That's what they were saying. They said, "Well, you can and charge them rent." We we didn't end up going that route, but 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 between that and the um, the, the two thousand dollar asset limit, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be really careful. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's it's still kind of tricky. I know SSI had a red book and a blue book, and depending on the SSDI or RSDI or SSI, um, if it explains in more detail as far as working, 
But each time I've looked at it, it seems like it changed. Well, and they have a program, and I can't think of the name of it, where they're trying to encourage them to take it to work. Ticket to work. Mm -hmm. Ticket to work. Yeah. But, but I just haven't read my head around it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You kind of, in essence, go to them and they kind of, you tell them what you want to do, and then that's your ticket yeah. to work. Yeah. Um, so that would be okay. something that we can try to get someone that and then hold another um okay I'll, I'll tell you so much so with medicaid yeah. so with medicaid mm -hmm. the limit is uh i believe it's twelve thousand mm dollars -hmm. so that's even less than the ssi mm -hmm. um in order to even be able to keep full benefits yeah that eight thousand a year yeah. so basically a thousand and so that, that seems more like the 840 mm -hmm. month mm -hmm. that you want to kind of stay under in order not to lose all of the benefit, yeah. right? You know, yeah, because you make an extra, you know, hundred dollars and you lose everything. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you yeah. make yeah. 840, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My husband is going to be my next weekend, so I feel like I just want to know that now. My son can benefit so oh. his social security. So if uh, any number or anybody that I can get in touch in order to absolutely, absolutely, I'll give you my card. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, oh, we're sorry. we're trying to understand what did you say would be another workshop to work on. Um, understanding the SSI, SSDI, RSDI. Work benefits. Okay. What you need to do to in in order to get a ticket to work because that's a program. Okay. Um, I know that there are some parents that have children or adults that are working and they surpass that income limit. And they're okay with not receiving mm -hmm. a monthly check as long as they still are able to keep the Medicaid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is an option as well. Yeah. 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 So that's the option as well. You can work and, and receive zero dollars because you make more than the income limit, but you still receive the Medicaid or Medicare mm -hmm. benefits to help your yeah. benefits. Yeah. So that's an option too, but that's part of that ticket to work. Just so you have an idea of what to look, yeah, what you have to exactly. do. And how the monthly and what are you willing to get off? Right. And so that that was the idea of ticket to work. Uh -huh. So you would know what to expect um, in the event that you made more or yes, you know, exactly. so you could choose and be able to plan, but it's no one really knows. And, and also for the way that how they calculate the uh, uh, <laughs> It's so right. complicated. It's very complicated. So Medicaid is income based, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it sounds like it's you can make a little, not a little bit, but much less than you make for SSI or SSDI. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Yeah, like I said, it's it's so hard balancing act. Um, when I first moved to Houston eight years ago, I worked for a company, and it was a client there where they had made a mistake. And they reimbursed him like ninety thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Then he had to figure out how to get rid of because he was in a um, group home setting, mm -hmm. and it exceeded. And they bought him a wheelchair. Oh, they they was just trying to buy a, a lot of stuff. And that's when I came in and um, helped to get a special needs trust because you have a certain amount of time to move that money to somewhere else. But if he had not had a special needs trust put in in that amount of time, he would have lost. That ability to stay in a group home and he wasn't able to make decisions for himself mm -hmm. at all but it was only so much that they could spend that fast so yes. it's really important you know that like i said people work and i'll tell you just a little bit my doctorate is in business administration and i did my dissertation on why people quit working mm -hmm. and you realize the importance of how work gives you helps with your personality it helps determine like kind of who you are, your friends. A lot of people make friends at work, mm -hmm. but when you have a disability, you're kind of blocked because it's like you could actually possibly achieve this greater level of success, but you know that right here is a foundation where you can thrive as well. So it's just finding that work-life balance and also finding that medium of how that person can you know live a fruitful life without disturbing those benefits that they 
definitely need and, and qualify for and deserve. So it is some situations yeah. I'm thinking I kind of look towards volunteer work. It's mm -hmm. kind of um, you know, laying a little bit mm -hmm. of a you know foundation and getting a little bit of a foot in the door so you get some of those benefits of being interacting with others and social skills and problem solving. But there isn't the requirement, you know, can you uh, can you interview well? Yeah. You, you know, can you hold up? You know, it, 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 the threshold is lower. It is. It it is. is. Yeah, the social because the client, the girl that I work for, she's I mean, she can talk, but she was nonverbal for a good time. Mind, and still, she's like that with the me being online or her having the the services that Anitra talked about. It's the social interaction is constant because it took her a good amount of time. To maintain it like a social network at work to where they kind of understood her different level of interaction because she still was nonverbal in a lot of aspects and you know understanding that on the job is that good there like she had a job at Trader Joe's and she lost it they were required to be really really social at Trader Joe's and that was not the point. Yeah. I would say one way we have found to compensate to try not to um disturb people's like uh, benefits is we will like um for instance andrew we make sure that we can cover his ride so we use that to get like an uber ride mm -hmm. or you can do like a gift card or things of that sort so it doesn't mess it up and it is some type of reward that's attached with volunteering or coming in and, and working and it doesn't go against that part but we definitely um we have a grant from texas council mm -hmm. Uh, developmental disability. So we do have two additional workshops that we do have to uh, cover and we'll make sure to see. And it's, 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 yeah, we'll have star back and, and make sure we get somebody else to help cover those topics of especially that SSI and so SSDI. This topic, this mm -hmm. transportation is something right. that you can be the, that will mm -hmm. lower your calculated income amount. So if, you know, like you said, Uber, the cost for that is deducted from the income amount, okay. and that is a lower amount that's actually taken in account because you have to get to work. So yeah. you take it off the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good to know because those rides are not like cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the toll rate, the yeah. toll expenses, and you yeah. may not, you know, a lot of people use public transportation, but a lot of areas you don't have public mm -hmm. transportation. Yeah, so and it yeah. also helps them with the skill of learning how you know to use an app mm -hmm. to get in the car with a stranger, if they're a stranger, yeah. and make sure you get to your location. And it also serves like it's good because I can tell people if they pick up Andrew or they're picking up another uh person that volunteers with us, this is this this person, they're they're coming to the work lodge, mm -hmm. they might have a disability, mm -hmm. you know, this is Versus people thinking, oh my gosh, something must be wrong. They might like trying to maybe they're not supposed to yeah. be here. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, the disclosure towards the person yeah. that's driving is a tricky thing because a lot of, like, you know, because the girl that I work with, she could take Uber, but they would have to know, you know, just take her to this place, don't worry, you ask her how she is, she may not answer you. Yeah. You know. But they also have Uber help, and it, it helps too because you can monitor their ride right. and see exactly where they at. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more expensive, <laughs> but. Um, the SSI, the SSI, help, help or help, huh? Help or help, help, help. They have Uber help. Yes. Oh wow, another person can also share their ride as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would say the and it's off topic. I'm sorry, yeah. but the, the here's the thing. At one point, we was thinking about like transportation services. So Uber and Lyft, they're really good. But if you got someone who has to go to a doctor's appointment and they're in a the wheelchair, they're not equipped to pull their wheelchair out and put it together and you know take them in there and i had some clients where uber would charge them for being late and that's because they they walk slow because they had a disability and they can get to that car fast enough mm -hmm. and then some of them are like i prefer to just be in my own car because the seat is where it needs to be and i'm comfortable so those are some gaps that yeah, that definitely need to be filled in, in that area or even taking someone to a doctor's appointment and sitting with them, listening to what the doctor has to say and reporting it back to that parent who's at work who may not have the ability to take off that. Day. So does that become a personal assistant? Yeah. That's personal yeah. assistant. Yeah. Okay. Notice that that's yeah. where yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm sorry. So just to go back and, and jump off of that. <laughs> no, no, but it all has to do uh, 
with each other. Income and so the transportation, the rides. Are they covered? They are covered. So most most of the time, uh, the most that I've seen is 60 one-way rides. Oh. However, they don't, it's like it's a one-way. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna wait. You may not have the same person going back. Then you have to call. You have to call. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know if you can put that, use that as deduction. If you don't pay for it, no, um, I'm familiar with that too. Um, if you don't pay for it, no, but if you do pay for any type of transportation, um, that is deductible from the, if what they call it, um, countable income, mm -hmm. countable income. Mm -hmm. So if you pay for it, it, it can be deducted from the countable income, but if it's a service that you're using. So most of the time, how many, how often are they going to the doctor? You can monthly deduct, like however much you pay, because I know some people that work and then they say, well, I paid $542 a month for transportation. Well, if you can prove that you pay that, then that comes off of your accountable income. So even though they earned more, they justify earning more um, oh. and still receiving the benefits because they have a $500, yeah. you know. Um, what, did you, what was that? Accountable. Accountable, accountable income, yes. Um, accountable income per month. So, and, and that's why I mentioned doing the lease because yeah. all of that yeah. goes into exactly. to play. So even though, you know, he's not paying anything, you may want to set something up to where the portion of his check is going to pay for his living mm -hmm. expenses. Okay. In addition yeah. to transportation, in addition to, and so now it's a can just to try to get why this person is making so much um, um, without it affecting their monthly. So even though that the transportation is not related to work. Right, but exactly. Okay. So you yeah, have to get some. Yeah, but they're, 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 they're only going to count um, the rides to and from work. So any transportation that's used outside of that is not part of the accountable oh, income. So that's why it's important for the individual to have a lease, have any type, you know, living expenses, because that is part of the accountable income. And that's going to allow the person to earn more and possibly, like she said, work more hours and have more social interaction versus trying to keep it down to... 10 hours a week, maybe they're able to work 20 hours a week and really be able to enjoy exactly. and get some sense of pattern consistency um, with working uh -huh. um, if they have more living expenses to be able to. Well, and at one point, and I don't know about this either, I was told that it depended, there was some, some connection between the cost of my mortgage or my home versus you know, like if I moved to another home and had a different mortgage and all this kind of stuff. And so, you know, that's true. Then whether I move or not, mm -hmm. it turns out that that'll affect their pain. Yeah, affect yeah. everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah it, it's essential. Like if you had an apartment in this area versus a different zip code, this mm -hmm. area would probably be a little bit more than another zip code. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. If you move, you know, mm -hmm. so in essence, I would. You know, for your zip code, I would just look for maybe like a one bedroom apartment or either a one bedroom rental in your zip code. And that will kind of give you an idea of what you could charge for rent. Yeah. <laughs> and they can go from there. For leasing, for the parent leasing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the child, mm -hmm. you have to prove it. Uh, yes, you will do a lease. You can go and just get a general. Yeah, those are document oh, okay. you create a lease okay. and you you create that lease. So if you say all bills paid mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. amount, then that means that that person doesn't have to have an electric bill in their name. You're mm -hmm. going to say this is an all bills paid lease agreement for this room at this rate, and that's what they pay monthly. Mm -hmm. And we have someone that's going to be here. Um, his name is um, David. And he rents out rooms. So there you go. Yep. So, oh, so question. yeah, you have more questions. He'll be here too. But we also have another presenter that uh, 
uh, affordable housing as well. You okay. want to do a wrap up for yeah, so to wrap up, you do have to have original Medicare in order to qualify for Medicare Advantage benefits. Um, Medicare Advantage benefits will cover the eighty percent as well as the twenty percent that Medi that original Medicare does not cover, uh, which can include but not always prescription drug, which is part of it. Okay. Um, you can get all of the information about different carriers like United Healthcare and Aetna, um, from independent insurance agents. A captive agent will only tell you about their carrier. And so, of course, they're going to tell you the benefits of their carrier versus everyone else, versus the independent agent telling you the different benefits and possibly the, um, the cons of not going with one carrier versus another. Okay. Um, Does it come with there? Yes. Is it state licensed or can you or nationwide? State, state. Okay. Do, does it cover therapies? Yes. So you can do um, mental health therapy. Um, even if they were in an accident for some reason, that would be the specifics of the plan. But chiropractic visits are covered as well. Um, so oh, that's a new attendee. That's uh, that's uh, okay. next time. So yeah. Different, so the specifics of the plan is possibly what you all want to know, and I can bring an example of the plan, so then you can know exactly what it covers uh, for Medicare. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Doc.